Assalamu alaikum. Dear students, this is our third lecture of sensory system. Let's do a recap. We have done how receptive potential is generated with special reference to Pacinian corpuscles. And we have talked about adaptation, its mechanism, the concept of adaptation, the different mechanisms for the different receptors, and examples of rapidly adapting receptors, slowly adapting receptors, intermediately adapting receptors, as well as the differences between tonic receptors and phasic receptors. In this lecture, we'll talk about other properties of receptors. Adaptation was one of the properties of receptors. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to describe the different properties of receptors. This comes in numbers as a short SQ, as an NCQ, and it's also important for viva. Reading material is the same as the previous two lectures. The question is, if you increase the stimulus intensity, what will happen to the amplitude of receptor potential and why? When you increase the stimulus intensity, what will happen? There will be opening of more channels, influx of more sodium, ultimately more positive ions are going in, so there will be more hypopolarization. The membrane potential will be more towards positivity, so the amplitude of receptor potential will increase. Now, when the amplitude of receptor potential is increased, what will happen to the frequency of action potential? As you increase the amplitude of receptor potential, it will be easier to reach to the threshold. If it is more likely to reach to the threshold, then ultimately action potential is more prone to happen. So increasing the amplitude of receptor potential will ultimately lead to increase in the frequency of action potential. What will happen to the magnitude of sensation when the frequency of action potential increases? So when a nerve is firing repeatedly action potential, what will happen to the magnitude of sensation? There will be summation. And what type of summation here? At the same point, but repeatedly there is firing. So there is temporal summation, which will increase the magnitude of sensation. So with increasing the intensity of stimulus, there is increase in the magnitude of sensation. Why? Increasing the intensity of stimulus increases receptor potential, which increases the frequency of action potential, which increases the magnitude of sensation. This is what we call as weber fischner law which says that magnitude of sensation felt is proportional to the log of intensity of stimulus. This was calculated through a formula. You don't need to know the formula. However, you need to know that magnitude of sensation is proportional to the intensity of stimulus. And how is it so? Because increasing the intensity of stimulus increases the amplitude of receptor potential. And how does it do that? By more channels are open, more influx of sodium, so the amplitude of receptor potential increases, so it's more likely to reach to the threshold, which ultimately will increase the frequency of action potential because of summation, this will lead to increasing the magnitude of sensation. If you see this diagram, you can see as you increase the strength of stimulus, there is increase in the amplitude of receptor potential because of more influx of sodium. More channels are opening because of the increase in the strength of stimulus, ultimately more influx of sodium, more positivity. And then it reaches to the plateau. Why there is plateau here? Think about it. Now see this diagram. As you increase the intensity of stimulus, increase in the receptor potential, and ultimately increase in the frequency of action potential. Why there is increase in frequency in action potential? Because the receptor potential is more likely to reach the threshold. That increases the frequency of action potential. This is an institute to think about the answer. Another property is differential sensitivity. What do we mean by differential sensitivity? From the name, differential sensitivity. Each receptor is sensitive to a specific modality of sensation or responsive to a specific modality of sensation or stimulus. So each receptor is sensitive to a specific type, type or let's say, modality of stimulus, and is non-responsive to other stimuli. For example, Pacinian corpuscles, these are the receptors for deep pressure and fast vibration. They do not respond to pain. So the Pacinian corpuscles are sensitive to specific type stimulus of stimulus, which is deep pressure and fast vibration, but is non-responsive to any other stimuli be it pain, temperature, or any other stimuli. So this is differential sensitivity. Why does the person perceive vision when rods and cones are stimulated and perceive hearing when rods, when hearing receptors are stimulated, cochlear receptors? 
Even so, action potential is the same in all nerve fibers. You know that one of the properties of nerve fibers is that all of them, they have the same action potential. Despite that, some nerve fibers, they, they send visual signals yani, to perceive the, the vision, and some fibers, they send signals to perceive hearing. So when rods and cones, the cones are stimulated, so vision happens, and when hearing receptor, cochlea receptors are stimulated, then hearing happens. So why is it so? The, the nerve fibers, they cannot see. This is dependent on the area in the cortex where the nerve fibers terminate. This is what we call as label line principle. So label line principle explains why that despite the nerve fibers, they all carry same type of impulses. However, they transfer, transmit different modalities of sensation. So label lines principle says that each nerve fiber is specific for transmitting only specific modality of sensation. So there are specific nerve fibers for transmitting pain sensations. There are specific nerve fibers to transmit the touch and pressure sensations. So each nerve fiber is specific for specific type of sensation. And the type of sensation that is felt, for example, vision, hearing, it's always determined by the point in the seenness in the cortex where the nerve fiber ends. So if the nerve fiber ends in the visual area, vision will be perceived. If it is in the auditory area, hearing will be perceived. So this is labeled uh, line principle has these two important points. Another property is sensory unit and receptive field. So what is sensory unit? Sensory unit is a single sensory neuron with all its branches. This is called as sensory unit. Or we can say a, sens a single sensory axon with all its branches. And receptive field is the area that is supplied by that single sensory unit. So sensory unit, single sensory neuron, and all its branches, receptive field is the area or distribution from which a stimulus produces a response in one sensory unit. I would like you to do these, these actions. Apply two stimuli in the skin of the hand at a distance of 20 mm. Even if you apply two pins in the skin at a distance of 20 mm, pin of the hand. And when apply two stimuli in the skin, of the hand at the distance of one mm. Now, which of, in which of these cases you are going to feel two stimuli and in which of these cases you are going to feel one stimulus? When you apply two stimuli at a distance of 20 mm, you can do it now, do it with two pins and then apply at a distance of one mm. When you apply it at a distance of one mm, you feel the two stimuli as one stimulus. When you apply it at a distance of 20 mm, you feel the two stimuli as two stimuli. Why is it so? Think about it. When you apply the two stimuli at a small distance of one mm, they were, they were felt as one stimulus because both they were in the same receptive field. However, when you apply the two stimuli at a distance of 20 mm, they were in two different receptive fields. That's why you felt them as two stimuli. This property is called as two-point discrimination. So two-point discrimination tells you that the two stimuli are in two receptive fields. And of course, because they are in two receptive fields, so they are supplied by two different sensory axons. And that's why they are also felt as two stimuli. The test tells you about the tactile acuity, which is the minimum it tells you about the uh, tactile acuity. For example, in the fingertips, the tactile acuity is quite high, which is about 2 mm. It's 2 mm. Whereas at the back, the tactile acuity is quite low, which is about uh, 60 mm, 6 centimeters. So in the fingertips, if you apply two stimuli at a distance of uh, 2 mm, you will feel it as 2. However, if you apply the two stimuli on the fingertips at a distance of 1 mm, you will feel it as 1. So the minimum distance on the skin that can be perceived as separate points of stimulation is called as, it, it is determined by two-point discrimination test. On the fingertips, it's about 2 mm. At the back, it is about 60 mm. That is large area. This physiological mechanism is used for the Braille's alphabet. Al uh, the Braille's alphabet, I'm sure you have an idea about it. It's used for the blind. So the two dots are made at a distance of 2.5 mm so that they are perceived by the fingertips as two stimuli because if the two dots are at a distance less than 2 mm they will not be felt as two stimuli they will be felt as one so the blind person cannot read 
And therefore, these two dots are made at a distance of 2.5 so that they're felt as two separate stimuli. This is an important question which asks about the, uh, the physiology for keeping the distance in the Braille's alphabetic system at 2.5 mm between the two spots. Now, what if two stimuli are applied in one receptive field? Which one will be felt? We said that one will be felt if it is applied in the same receptive field, but which one will be felt? The one which is, which is more towards the center will be felt. The stimulus that is more lateral, it will be inhibited. And that's what we call as lateral inhibition. So lateral inhibition says that information from sensory receptors, which are at the, at the periphery of the stimulus is inhibited as compared to information from sensory receptors at the center of stimulus. And this is very important property. Lateral inhibition is very important property for localization of stimulus. What if the sensory pathway is stimulated at the level of the receptors? Where would the sensation be felt? And what if the sensory pathway is stimulated at the level of spinal cord? Where would the sensation be felt? Wherever the sensory pathway is stimulated, always the sensation is felt at the level of receptors. This is what we call as law of projection. So remember, in law of projection, no matter where a sensory pathway is stimulated, always the sensation will be felt at the location of the receptor. In 1551, Ambroise wrote that the patients long after imputation, still they say that they still feel the pain in the ambulatory part. This is what we call as phantom limb pain. So what do you think is the cause for it? Please do open Ganong only chapter 11, only page 176. It's about one paragraph that explains this phenomena. So please go through it. It's related to low projection as well as to another mechanism, another physiological mechanism. Please go through it. So these are the properties of receptors we have covered till now. Receptors, they can generate receptor potential. There is adaptation. There is word professional law, differential sensitivity, label line principle, sensory unit and sensory and receptive field, what are they? Two point discrimination and its physiological importance and application as well in the braille system for the blind, lateral inhibition and its function for localization of stimulus and law of projection. If you have any questions, we'll discuss inshallah in the lectures.